Hello again, it's me, Riley. So in this video, we're gonna be continuing with the beginner's Bitwig stuff. This time, we're gonna talk about recording in Bitwig. Previously, we've been talking about MIDI and this is gonna be about recording audio. So a lot of the stuff is the same, but then there's some stuff that's different. Yeah, just focusing on recording. So let's just get into it. Probably need an audio interface to do this unless you're just recording with your built-in mic. You could do that and you could record with the built-in mic in your computer. So my mic's plugged in. Alrighty, so over in Bitwig, we're gonna go to the dashboard, settings, audio. My input device is my audio fuse. I'm gonna leave the output device to loop back audio for now, because that's what I'm using to record the audio for this video. The block size, that's gonna be your latency. So basically the buffer size that the computer has for real-time audio. So for sound coming in to sound coming out. If you're doing mixing and you have lots of plugins on, you're gonna want to have your block size be higher. If you're recording and you wanna record with effects and you wanna hear the effects in real time, You'll probably want to have it lower, like uh, 128 or even 64 if your computer can handle it. However, 256 is often going to be okay. And you can always, usually, almost always, you can monitor off of your audio interface. So that's sort of, it is important, and this is where you set it in Bitwig. So I'm going to leave it at 256. And then all these settings are the actual inputs. So the way it works in Bitwig is like these are the actual inputs that are available to us. And then these are what those will come up with as names in the software. 1 through 14 are just what the audio fuse is telling Bitwig that it has available. And then you can have Bitwig give that a name. Like if you always use a certain input for guitar, you could call it... Guitar it looks a little confusing, but once you set it up, it's just going to say whatever you have it set to. The microphone is plugged into mono in, so that's what I've mono in one, so that's all I need. So for this video, I'm going to be using single sources. So I'm using a microphone and I'm using a guitar. But if you are using a synthesizer or something that has two outputs, like a left and right stereo, you'll probably want to make sure that you're using a stereo input and that you select the two inputs you're plugging into. And that's so that they can show up a left and right on one track in Bitwig. So you're getting two channels of audio on one track for instruments that need it. But again, for me in this video, I'm using a mic and I'm going to use a guitar. So those are both mono sources. In the software, I'm going to go over to an audio track. Uh, you can create an audio track by going add audio track or the keyboard shortcut command or control on Windows. Shift and T. Command shift T. Look, look at all those audio tracks. Okay, so... Uh, Let's just go to an audio track here and where it says input, let's set that to mono in one. And yeah, you can see there's audio coming in because I already have my mic plugged in like we did before. There's a couple settings. So the track needs to be record enabled. There we go. Now you can hear me. And the other thing that we need is these buttons here beside where it says the name of the input these are the different types of monitoring so if i turn this off we're not getting any monitoring the only sound you're hearing is from my phone mic so the monitoring modes decide how we hear the audio that's coming from the input of a track in bitwig auto monitoring is the default if your track is record enabled, you'll hear the input through any effects that are on the track, unless there's already some audio that's playing back in the timeline or in one of the clips. That'll often be exactly what you want, so this would be like play back my input signal unless something is already recorded in that section of the song. 
monitor on, you'll always hear the input of the track, whether it's record enabled or not. But if there is audio clips on the track, you won't hear them at all. So that's a bit of a special use case. I want to hear the input of the track always, but nothing that is already recorded on the track. So it's not something most people will use often anyway. Monitoring off, this will only play back the audio that is on the track, but you won't hear the input, even if you're recording. It'll record, but you'll have to play back to hear what you just did. So that's useful for if you're using the built-in monitoring of your interface or if you have a recording console or something, and you don't care about hearing audio effects in Bitwig as you record. Okay, so I'm... I'm back with the Bitwig project that I've been working on on these tutorial videos. I'm going to take this version of the first song that I made from the clip launcher and I'm going to drag it into the arrangement view. I'm going to click this button to make sure we're playing from the arrangement view and then I'm going to hide the clip launcher. So now we just have this song. Or it's more like the beginnings of the song. So I'll add a audio track. I'll set it to take from mono in. I'll make it so that it's monitor mode is auto. Hello. There we go. It's recording now. I'm actually going to click over here. And I'm just going to record myself. Oh. Uh, Okay, kind of bad, but whatever. So now if I make, if I add an instrument track now, and what I want to do, let's just listen to this. So I double clicked it, it's open in this audio editor down here. Oh, yeah, I'm just going to take this first one. So if I, if I double click near where this little marker is, it's going to... Um, Bitwig smart with the way it handles files. It knows that that's the beginning of a note there. It knows that that's a transient. So I'm going to do that. I'm also going to click here. So yeah, I'm going to drag that into the timeline because that's what I want. Just that. I'm going to drag that clip into an instrument track and it's going to make a sampler. And if I right click here, detect root key, it now knows that that should be the note to set it to to make this the right key. <laughs> So now I can play with that as an instrument. So that's, that's pretty weird sounding. I'm also going to set it to loop. See that? So I can delete this track now. And I'm going to call this just voice. Uh-huh. 
recording but using a recording and then putting it into a sampler pretty cool the next thing i'm going to do is uh, i'll try adding a guitar part to this good it is but I have an idea that I'm going to record. is I'm just gonna actually go right ahead and record another take over top. Now, th this is actually, I think, the first thing that I've showed in this tutorial series, that this is something that you need the full version of Bitwig for. It doesn't work in, in Bitwig 16 track. In the full version of Bitwig, if I double click on an audio clip, I'm gonna have this comping option here. And so the comping option, it lets me make a comp, which uh, comp stands for composite. So it allows you to make a composite take of the parts that you like about the two takes. So if I click here, I'm listening to take two. If I click here, I'm listening to take one. So I think, I mean, I just wrote the part, neither of the parts sounded that great, but um, I'm gonna listen to the second take as I think it was better. And I moved the volume when I was recording. I'm going to delete that automation by right clicking.
Okay, so some of that's good, some of that isn't. Let's listen here again. So overall, I do like this beginning part, I think. Let's see that from the first take. Yeah, I like that. So I'm going to go with the, the second take, and right here, I'm just going to draw a, a click and drag like that and that's going to split so this is all second take except this part let's hear how that sounds actually want this to just go there because I played it right this time. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this I did the com command L shortcut and that sets this clip to just loop this section. Actually, it's, I'm going to do that here just for ease of uh, getting into the song. So I want this part is one part, just sort of an intro thing. I'm going to split that, put it here.
what I'm doing is making this a loop that that's just this part that I edited because that, that's all I wanted anyway. So there's a couple of bits here that are, it's a little loose, it's more out of time than I necessarily want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch mode. here okay so if I click if I double click there that's gonna make a stretch marker on this transient marker these blue dots are called on they call them onsets and what an onset is is it detects the transients so the transients are the peaks of a signal where it's basically it's the start of a signal is the transient so it's where there's a big like a blip and then there's a decay after that so it automatically senses where those are because that's 95% of the time that's where you're going to be wanting to make time edits based off. So if I click like that with the stretch selected in the audio editor, it's going to make a little stretch marker there on the transient, the closest transient. So I made these two because these are ones that are, are in time. So I want those to be anchors. And then this one I'm going to move, but see it, it, it's staying anchored because these are, are stretched. And I'm going to make one here, I'm going to stretch that. So super simple to get that part in time. And because this is, is looping, it's just looping through what I've already done. Sometimes if it looks off time, you know, sometimes it doesn't matter if it looks off time. If it sounds right, you just leave it. That's the biggest uh, tip I find for editing is um, make sure to use your ears, even when you're trying to get stuff gridded. Sometimes what sounds right is what not what looks right.
Okay, so I'm happy with that. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to now uh, take this clip and I'm going to go bounce. Uh, actually, not bounce, but bounce in place. And that's going to actually turn this into a new audio file with those edits applied to it. So I think this song sounds a little weird now. I'm probably gonna go in and, and edit it a bit, or maybe we could do that in another video, but we did record audio in a couple ways, and yeah. Well, I started this video at home, and now I'm visiting my parents. Well, that's it. I hope it was helpful, and I'll be back again. Might not be able to do it next week, but there's more, more to come. I'm gonna do one on MIDI, setting up MIDI devices, so if you have a keyboard or you want to connect to a groove box or anything with MIDI. So subscribe and comment and stuff if you like this sort of content. Want to see more of it? Bye!